This is a hierarchical classification system that categorizes different types of learning processes into four main categories called the taxonomy of learning by Tiemann and Marco. Let's break it down. So emotional learning underlies all other types of learning and involves physiological arousal and inner feelings in response to stimuli. An example would be developing a positive or aversive attitude towards mathematics after experiencing success or failure in problem solving. Then we have psychomotor learning, which focuses on physical skills and muscle movements. This is the how-to part of the taxonomy. It has three subcategories. At the basic unit, we have single responses like kicking a ball. Next, we have the linked unit called chains, where there are multiple responses in a specific order like tying shoelaces. Finally, in the combined unit, we have the kinesthetic repertoire, which are multiple different responses and chains of responses that occur to match environmental factors. This is like basketball players such as Steph Curry dribbling around defenders, picking up the ball and shooting it in their face. Instructional designers use the psychomotor column to ensure that physical skills are properly addressed in learning experiences. This is particularly important in fields where physical actions are a crucial part of the competency being developed. By understanding the psychomotor domain, instructional designers can create more comprehensive and effective learning experiences that address not only cognitive skills, but also the physical skills necessary for many real world tasks. The simple cognitive column involves basic memory and recall processes. It helps with when to. The subcategories include single associations, which is learning a single connection between stimulus and response, such as learning that the letter A makes the A sound as an apple. Then paired associates, which is learning sets of associations often involving longer lists of items to be memorized. An example would be learning vocabulary words in a foreign language where each foreign word is paired with its English meaning. Multiple pairs of items are learned together, but each pair is still a discrete unit. Then we have multiple discrimination, like learning to distinguish between similar stimuli and associate each with the correct response. An example would be learning to identify different types of clouds based on their appearance. This involves distinguishing between similar stimuli and choosing the correct response from multiple options. Moving on, serial memory is a type of simple cognitive learning where items are learned and recalled in a specific order or sequence. An example is learning to recite the alphabet in order. The order of items is crucial and each item serves as a cue for the next item in the sequence. Last for this column is algorithm, which is a step-by-step -step procedure or set of rules for solving problems or accomplishing a task. An example is learning the steps to solve a long division problem. Divide, multiply, subtract, bring down the next digit. Repeat steps one through four until finished. The thing is, algorithms are precise, unambiguous, and can be followed mechanically to achieve a desired outcome. By focusing on simple cognitive learning, instructional designers can create effective scaffolding for learners, ensuring that they have the necessary basic knowledge and skills before moving on to the next complex cognitive tasks. This approach helps in creating well-structured, progressive learning experiences that build from simple to complex, supporting learners at every step of their learning journey. In the complex cognitive column, first is concept learning, which is the process of understanding and categorizing objects, events, or ideas based on shared characteristics. An example is learning to identify different types of clouds based on their appearance and properties. This is where we gain the ability to generalize to new examples and discriminate between examples and non-examples. This may sound like multiple discrimination, but multiple discrimination focuses on recognizing visual differences, whereas concept learning involves understanding underlying properties and principles. Speaking of principles, principle applying is learning to use statements that express relationships between two or more concepts to solve problems or explain phenomena. An example would be applying the principle of supply and demand to predict the price changes in a market economy. It is the skill to recognize when a principle is applicable and correctly apply it to new situations. Last, we have strategy learning, which is developing and using organized approaches to solve problems or accomplish tasks. An example is learning and applying the scientific method to conduct research and solve problems. It is the skill to select and adapt appropriate strategies for different types of problems or situations. By focusing on complex cognitive learning, instructional designers can create learning experiences that challenge learners to think deeply, apply knowledge flexibly, and develop skills crucial for success in complex 
real world environments. This approach helps prepare learners not just to recall information, but to use it creatively and critically in various contexts, supporting the development of lifelong learning skills. Incorporating activities that target concept learning, principle applying, and strategy learning, instructional designers can help learners develop the sophisticated cognitive skills necessary for success in academic, professional, and personal contexts. And that's the taxonomy of learning. Let me know what you think, how I did as an educator, and any questions you have, ask in the chat. I'm Jared, an educator, behavior scientist, instructional designer, abolitionist, precision teacher, and special education PhD student at Penn State, Black and here to educate.